in this devotional, I'm going to share with you three thoughts from Isaiah 46, verses 8 through 11, where I'll ask the question, what actions does God take? Isaiah 46, verses 8 through 11 says, Remember this and stand firm. Recall it to mind, you transgressors. Remember the former things of old, for I am God and there is no other. I am God, and there is none like me, declaring the end from the beginning, and from ancient times things not yet done, saying, My counsel shall stand, and I will accomplish all my purpose. Calling a bird of prey from the east, the man of my counsel from a far country, I have spoken, and I will bring it to pass. I have purposed, and I will do it. The words of Isaiah serve as a warning. They serve as a warning both for Israel and for the nations that are oppressing Israel. They serve as a warning for us today, too, because we need to know that our God is both fully aware of everything that is taking place and is, in fact, purposing all that is happening in accordance with his own will. We ask the question, what actions does God take? What is it that God does? How is he accomplishing his purposes in the world? We ask that question because we don't understand what he's doing. But what we can do is trust that all of the actions that God takes are rooted in his own divine character and as such ought not be questioned by us. With that in mind, here are three thoughts from Isaiah 46, verses 8 through 11, answering the question, what actions does God take? Thought number one, end from the beginning. God knows the ends of the earth in terms of time from the beginning. So when God creates the earth, nothing is left to question. Nothing is left to chance. Nothing is happening that God did not intend to happen. Even things like the fall in the garden are a part of his divine decree, his everlasting and eternal decree for what he is going to do in the world. Understanding this makes us realize that God is over and above all things. That's a phrase that I use a lot because it's one that we need to really get drilled into our skull. That God is over and above all things and has ultimate control, authority, and power over all things. He knows the end from the beginning because he has decreed it to take place. Thought number two, accomplish purposes. God is accomplishing all of his purposes. Everything that he means to do, he does. Nothing is unknown to him, so there are no surprises. There are no unanticipated outcomes. There is nothing that takes place that catches God off guard. When we start to think that God is surprised by us, when we start to think that the future is an ultimate unknown because it doesn't yet exist, we are misunderstanding the nature of God, and we are making him more like a man than like the divine being he is. God accomplishes all of his purposes in a way that we don't. We have all sorts of things that we want to do. I want to eventually get enough of these devotionals up that you could read through the entire text of scripture and I will have said something hopefully helpful about the majority of it. Like that's something that I'm purposing to do. Is that going to actually happen? I don't know. I I don't know. Maybe, maybe not, probably not. That's a lot. It's a big book. But God isn't like that. When God purposes to do something, those purposes are accomplished each and every time without fail and without question. Thought number three, God will do it. When God says he will do something, he will do it. Rest assured, it will come to pass. So as we look through the text of scripture and we see the different things that God predicts he is going to do and then accomplishes them, we see that all throughout the Old Testament. Or we look at some of the prophecies in the New Testament, like about the return of Christ, we know that God will do it. Everything that he has said, he will do. Everything that he has purposed, he will accomplish because he has known the end from the beginning. He has decreed all that takes place. And this should give us a sense of comfort. It should give us a sense of awe and wonder at the glory and amazing power of our heavenly father. What it shouldn't do is cause us to think less of him. 
It shouldn't cause us to say that he is the author of sin. But instead, we should recognize that God is bringing about his ultimate glory, even through the punishments of sinful beings. These three thoughts come from the assigned reading of Isaiah chapters 45 through 50. If you'd like to read through the Bible with me, you can do so by subscribing to this channel, by clicking on the link in the description, or by joining the Facebook group Through the Bible, where we are reading the text of Scripture together.